This video is brought to you by Squarespace. We did it, fam. After just over seven months of running this channel and about six and a half months of complaining that I don't have enough space to actually film these videos, we found a space. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. So in this video, the first of many in this series, I'm going to outline how I'm going about planning it, my considerations for how I'm going to design it and lay it out, and perhaps most excitingly, all of the gear that I'm planning on buying and begging for from potential sponsors to outfit it. Oh, and please do stick around to the end because all of this is still very much TBD and the main purpose of actually making this video is to crowdsource the design of this space, get your guys' inputs, ideas, and feedback, and I'm sure that lots of you out there have tons of experience designing your own maker setups at home or even recording studios and home offices. And 38,000 brains is better than one highly caffeinated, impatient one. So without further ado, welcome to part one of the ultimate inner city makerspace and recording studio build project. It's a working title. Let's dive in. First things first, let's talk about the space itself. Thanks to my friend Leonora who observed a slightly sketchy nondescript advertisement on a street lamp, I was actually able to find this basement space in a building about 10 minutes walk away from my home. It's a little over 60 square meters or 646 square feet in an undisclosed location in the heart of Tel Aviv, which up until recently was the most expensive city on earth. While it looks like the place was previously rented out as an office, due to zoning, it can now only be used as a warehouse and storage space. And so one of the key considerations that you all need to keep in mind as you watch this video is that I cannot actually make this space look completely like an office or a recording studio. It needs to look and feel more like a warehouse. That's fine because ultimately it's mostly going to be a warehouse for my 3D printers, filament, camera equipment, and so on. I just might happen to record a video there once in a while. But also, if you ever see kids' bicycles, suitcases, or camping equipment in the background of my future videos, well, now you know why. My studio is a warehouse. The space is divided up into a hallway, a kitchenette, a bathroom, a small storage closet, an office-like spot with glass walls, and boarded up windows, and then a main area with these two nice partitions. I also have an entire wall of built-in cabinets, which are great for hiding away the less aesthetic stuff, aesthetic? Aesthetic stuff that I'll need to store. Finally, I have a very limited number of power outlets in all the wrong places, but we'll get into that in a little bit. The objectives. Of course, before any project, I think it's really important to first outline what it is you're trying to accomplish. And so let's talk really, really quickly about what I want this space to actually do for me and for this channel. First, and perhaps most importantly, I need recording sets, ideally two to three of them so that you, the audience, doesn't get bored seeing the exact same background all the time. I've actually found that videos where I jump around from background to background, like my recent Top Organization Systems video, perform significantly better than those where I record with just one background or camera angle. So while I love Uncle Jesse and Joel the 3D Printing Nerd setups, and I do want one of my sets to look like theirs, I think it's really important that the space be laid out in such a way that I have multiple backgrounds to record with. Needless to say, these spaces need to look good, but they also need to sound good with acoustic treatments and so on. The next important thing is obviously storage space. One big goal with this space is going to be the ability to accept more products and printers from manufacturers for review, comparisons, and projects that I can turn into great content for all of you. And so I'm going to need a lot of space to actually store the printers that I do want to keep around when I'm done with them. Ideally, the printers and products that make noise should be isolated enough so that I can still record while things are printing, and any resin printers, lasers, and so on which emit toxic fumes will need to be isolated somewhere that can contain those fumes and ideally vent to the outside. But all of that will require that they be located somewhere with enough outlets on enough different circuit breakers so that I can run multiple printers at once. And of course, I need lots and lots of storage space for filament. 
ideally which would be in a humidity controlled environment, but at the very least near enough of the printers in a convenient enough location so I don't have to walk around to switch filaments. Generally speaking, I want to lay the space out as ergonomically as possible to reduce the unnecessary steps and so on. Because remember, above all, I'm lazy. The next consideration and requirement is going to be work areas. And by work, I mean physical work, not so much sitting on the computer and typing work that I can do at home. While I can't make the space look like a workshop entirely, I definitely need and want a decent amount of surface area with 360 degree access to be able to repair printers, build new ones, post-process prints, and film B-roll footage. It would be great to be able to set up numerous cameras around that space, including overhead cameras, primary lights, accent lights, and much, much more. Which is a great segue into one of my biggest challenges, and that's balancing versatility versus always being ready. On the one hand, I know from my experience in my last business and my last at-home recording studio that it's best to get all the restrictions and limitations out of the way so that when I'm inspired to create, everything is already set up. I just need to push a few buttons and boom, I'm recording. On the other hand, I do want to cut costs wherever possible as this is still a very new business. And so rather than buying multiple sets of lighting, microphones, cameras, and so on, I'd really like for it to be quick and easy enough to move from one set to another without having to completely disassemble everything. And last but definitely not least is going to be floor space. If you ever had your portrait taken, then you know that photography tripods and stands can take up a ton of space and they're easy to trip over. So as much as possible, I wanna have a lot of floor space clear for moving equipment and printers around the room, setting up tripods or sliders and so on. Oh, and finally, I think it goes without saying because you all know that YouTube AdSense doesn't really pay very well, but I really need to consider cost savings wherever possible. Hopefully in the future, I'll be signing some big sponsorship deals that will allow me to expand. But for now, I'm basically breaking even on this whole channel after paying rent and staff salaries and paternity leave and all that stuff. So anything I can do to make things by myself, buy secondhand, receive from sponsors, or just generally do on the cheap is gonna be a big win. Which leads me to one other thing that I am considering, but I'm not sure if I want to do, is to build a print farm to help bring in some extra income and cover the expenses of this place. Now, I've sold some of my designs and prints on Etsy before, but to be completely honest, after all the fees, it's really not worth my time. So I'm currently considering building my own website where I can offer 3D printing services locally, sell my own models in digital or printed form, or even just sell other people's models that I'll buy commercial licenses to. If I do end up doing it, I can think of no better and faster way to get that part of the business up and running than with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Look, running a business is really hard. There are like a million and one things that you need to do and become an expert in. Fortunately, thanks to Squarespace, web design and server management aren't one of them. Squarespace's easy to use website builder lets you build anything from a portfolio website to a digital download store to an e-commerce site selling physical goods all easily and quickly without having to deal with the hassle of coding or technical knowledge or updating the software on your server. So to get started building your dream website like I'm building my dream studio, hopefully with a lot less effort, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash the next layer to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so those are all the requirements you need to keep in mind. Now let's talk about designing the space. After taking copious measurements, I really need to buy one of those laser meter measure tape measure things. I went about designing the floor plan in Sweet Home 3D, a free and open source design program that lets you design the space, lay out the furniture, and even virtually visit the space to see how it will look and feel. Now, whether you're planning out a bedroom, an office, or really any project, I highly recommend SH3D, and I've been using it for over a decade because it's super easy to use and it's much more convenient than moving the furniture around physically to try out different layouts. I then handed that Sweet Home 3D file over to my friend Jonathan, who runs a 3D printing channel of his own called Maker Tales, and really specializes in using Blender for 3D modeling. Yeah, 
I could have used the virtual walkthrough in SH3D, but I've been wanting to collaborate with Jonathan for a while now. And plus, because Blender not only does 3D modeling, but also animation and CGI, it's better suited for giving you guys the absolute coolest and most realistic virtual tour of the new space. So a big thanks to Jonathan. And for those of you interested in 3D printing and Blender, make sure to check out his channel in the description below. So based on all the different considerations I shared above, Here's what I've come up with so far. But remember, this is just a prototype. And I really, really want that as you watch, note down any comments below of anything that you think should be done differently or better. Okay, so as we enter the hallway in these built-in cabinets, we have storage space for all of the ugly but small things that are rarely used. I'm not really sure what that actually is going to be, but it's good to know that I have this storage space and it's hidden away for the things that I don't wanna see every day. Now, right when you come into the actual space, we have this enclosed walk-in closet type space, which if we can get some power outlets put in, I'm thinking I'll put simple tables or shelves and put all of the dangerous and toxic stuff like resin 3D printers, laser cutters, and so on right in here. Then hopefully I'll figure out a way to vent fumes and all of that out of this window. As we turn into the main space, I'm thinking that each one of these cubbies will turn into a recording set. On the left, a standing desk on wheels, similar to the setup that Joel and Uncle Jesse have, but with the background as a full matte black 3D printed honeycomb tool wall with all sorts of video recording equipment and gear hung right up on the wall, right there where I mostly use it. But I do wanna know from all of you, what do you guys think of that as a primary background? I mean, in a way, I know that your set kind of becomes part of your brand, and I like the idea of having a 3D printed tool wall being my brand. I mean, it already kind of is, but let me know if you think that it'll be too busy on the eyes to have a full wall of it. On the sides of the cubby, I'm thinking of maybe some shelves to show off larger 3D prints, such as busts and so on. But again, I'm not sure because I don't want it to look too busy. For lighting, I'm debating between mounting one softbox right on this column with swivel arms that can swivel 180 degrees from either side and or doing some sort of auto pull that'll run along the ceiling to the floor to ceiling or both. Then my main softbox and camera can be on one big C-stand or just a C-stand and a tripod or slider or whatever else for the actual camera. And there's plenty of empty area in the middle for that. In the right cubby or the next cubby, I was thinking of putting a couch and a plant and maybe even a coffee table so that I have a kind of sitting set that I can use to change things up a little bit for monologues. I'm not certain about this one, to be honest, so let me know if you have better ideas, but it might also be good for recording podcasts, though truth be told, because of the time of day that I record, I'll probably just record the infill podcasts here at home in my current home office. Now, I'm not sure what I will do for acoustic treatment of these two cubbies, but most likely I'm going to need to put some panels on the ceiling at the very least, and perhaps some cheap area rugs on the floor below. Along the right and back walls of the space, I'm thinking tons of shelves and storage, which I'll slowly add as my budget permits because they're really expensive here. Here for the time being, I can put the quiet stuff like overflow suitcases and camping equipment from home. And eventually over time, I'll take advantage of the outlets along these two walls to add even more 3D printers or other equipment that requires electrical outlets. I can then maybe put another table on wheels right smack in the middle of the room with 360 degree access for doing projects or recording B-roll. And if I do this, it'll allow those shelves, whenever I actually have something worth showing that's not suitcases on them, to become a third backdrop and a third scene for filming. Next to the entrance, accessible from and draggable to all of the different points in the room, I'm hoping that I can hustle together another big tool chest like the one I have at home with two or three empty drawers just for Gridfinity storage, drawer dividers, and all sorts of cables and so on. Then above it, the lesser used, less aesthetic, and larger video equipment like light stands and so on can go maybe on a honeycomb storage wall. Finally, we get to the crown jewel of the place, the print farm. To be clear, I currently don't do enough commercial printing to really justify having a print farm, but I figure that isolating all the FDM printers and filament into one room will be good for a few different reasons. 
First, if I come up with a solution for better sealing the gaps in the glass door, I can have prints running and filming time lapses in there without the noise interrupting video recordings or me moving around and interrupting the time lapses. I can't tell you how many time lapses I've lost because I accidentally kicked the leg of a tripod. Second, I can isolate myself from harmful VOCs or airborne plastics, put in large air filters in this room, and maybe even create some ventilation by opening up the boarded up windows above. Here again, outlets are severely limited to basically just that one back wall to the right when you walk in, but I think I'll be able to get an electrician to help me bring over electricity from the resin room through the drywall. And that way I'll be able to have two rows of shelves full of printers. Then in the middle of the room, accessible from both sides, I think that I'm gonna store my filament on a series of full length RepRack open source filament storage racks. By my calculations, I should be able to store about 160 rolls of filament here, and I'm even considering using a large format laser cutter that's being sent over to create a sort of mounted dry box on a segment of the RepRack for storing hygroscopic filaments. Maybe, if the echo isn't too bad in the room, I could even use that for a fourth background for filming as well. Whew! That was a lot. So if you're still with me, you are awesome. But yeah, there you have it. The preliminary designs for my ultimate makerspace slash studio. Hey, there. That's actually already a better name. But I genuinely want to know in the comments below. What do you guys think? Am I missing anything? What would you do differently? I'm really depending on all of you to help me make this space the best that it can possibly be because ultimately that's going to mean even more higher quality content for all of you. So to follow along with the rest of the build as I go about putting these plans into action, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna hit the like button while you're down there, I definitely appreciate it because it really does make a difference. And as always, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me make this into a reality. I appreciate you guys more than you probably understand. Thanks to all of you for watching, and I'll see all of you on the next layer.